Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. So the messages are designed to show us, to cause us to see. Number three, the messages are designed to allow the Holy Spirit to invade our lives and produce dimensions of results in and through our lives that only God can produce. The messages are like ushers. So it is not unusual that whilst the message is coming, the Holy Spirit is just moving in the midst of his people, bringing deliverance, bringing healing, bringing breakthroughs. The messages were designed to be conducive for the operation of the Spirit. There are certain things that cannot be taught. There are experiences that only the might of God can produce. This is the limitation of the teaching ministry when it is done purely from a religious standpoint. It will only end up educating people. There are some results that do not depend on education. People need to encounter the power of God and have situations in their lives change immediately. Praise the Lord. There are believers who come before God with emergencies. They don't need to learn any law. They don't need to learn any principle. They can learn when the situation has been solved. The urgency will not allow them to give God their attention. So you're not going to bring, you're not going to help them by trying to say, oh, you're in a situation. You know, listen, listen. Um, you'll be learning a lot today. You hear people say things like miracle alert and all of that. Um, God's idea is not to keep you in the realm of alert. You know that. Um, you're not going to be able to feed your family just with alert. But that there are people who are in situations where it's a waste to give them any book on well. The urgency at that point requires a miracle here and now. And so God must be allowed to step in and let them experience his hand. And then when they are at ease, they can now sit down and learn the ways of God that makes for sustainable results. If every miracle comes just through the understanding of principles alone, then many believers will die and never live to learn all they need to be victorious. God is that merciful to solve your problems while you learn. God is that merciful to let you experience his power while you are growing. We cannot, we, we can't peg everybody to receive results only at their level of transformation. It is dangerous. Because there are people who, um, they are where they are not because of anything of themselves. They have come from backgrounds that will not allow them. Let me give you an instance. A man of 60, 70 years, intellectually speaking, his rate of assimilation will be a lot slower than a young man of 20 to 25. Is that true? 
And so if God is to allow that man learn and know everything about breakthrough, to experience breakthrough, that man will probably need the next 10 or 15 years of consistent mentorship. So unique to that man's condition, he will experience a dimension of God's mercy that only his age range can allow. You will be surprised to find out that whether he understands what the preacher is understanding or not, God will route him to be under the grace preaching, not under the knowledge. He will not get results just by understanding because he probably will be sleeping when the message is read. And God's mercy is wise enough to shift him to a zone where he can still be a partaker of the hand of God. This is very powerful. Now, if that guy begins to allow you to use his life as a standard, you are in trouble. Because the man is not even aware that something special was done to him. So he will say, you can see my life. I didn't do anything. God just keeps blessing me any day. And then you try to do that at 21. And you will be very surprised. When God vetoes his principles, he's not neglecting them. It's how far his love can go. It matters that we know God. There is a lot of ignorance in the body of Christ. Not ignorance in terms of absence of knowledge. Ignorance in terms of ill-constructed spiritual information. Information that was not constructed properly to provide victory. So we have a little here and a little there, like materials for building a house, but not well structured. Random spiritual information scattered around our spirits and our minds. And we fish out anyone in the face of danger. We continue to fish them out one by one, hoping at least one can work. But platforms like this were provided to give us accuracy. So that your understanding will be very exact. You are not guessing. This is your house. Your home. We welcome you, Lord, we welcome you. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. Sing it one more time with faith in your heart. This is your house, your home. This is your house, your home. We welcome you today. So come up here. That is an attempt to challenge us to rise beyond the dimensions of God that we have seen and known to a place of greater perfection. To a place of greater accuracy. Revelations chapter 4. Revelations chapter 4. I want you to continue to believe the things that you are learning. The integrity of God is behind the things you are learning. And I give you a guarantee that if you pay attention to labor in the word to know God and to know his ways, you will be remarkably surprised at how powerful, how powerful God can be when given space through obedience and alignment in the life of a man. When I don't have results in an area, I make sure that I minimize conversing in that area because I do not have the authorization to speak. It is foolish to argue when you do not have results. Our world, many believers are confused today 
because of the interruption that the pride of resultless people continue to bring in the process of mentorship. That while God is teaching people principles, here comes another dimension of pride in ignorance, interrupting the pace of conviction and assimilation. If I had my way and I had to mentor believers, I would isolate them. I would take it like a system of quarantine somewhere. And then we'll sign a disclaimer that if by listening to this man of God for these years and obeying under God, you do not get these results, you hold the person liable. Many of us do not learn because there are interruptions to our convictions. Just when you are about to settle on something as true, here comes a message that delays your believing it. So you start another journey of six months in argument based on what I've had now. Should I believe or should I not believe? While you are, you are debating, you are suffering and your family members are paying the price. Take the risk. Trust something. Take the risk. It's worth the risk to throw yourself and say, let me at least believe something. God, help me. If I fail, let your mercy be there to pick me up. But take the risk. Don't stand in foolishness today. You are here tomorrow. You are there. You are arguing. And while you are doing that, time is going. Take the risk. You must believe something. When Jesus met people who had convictions, he had respect for them. Although their convictions were on wrong philosophies, he respected the fact that they could peg their convictions on something exact. Are we together? Mm. A man who does not have conviction in anything is a dangerous man. Is a dangerous man. Don't stay near that person. It's better to have convictions in the wrong thing. That's why it was easy for God to convert Saul. He believed he was doing God's service by persecuting the Christians. And when God revealed himself, he switched immediately. There was no embarrassment. But the scribes and Pharisees, they wouldn't let Jesus alone to preach. They would be at his crusades. And yet they would never believe. You see how difficult it was? The woman by the well. Madam, you have seven husbands, six husbands. Yes, sir. This and that and that. Yes, sir. And she was changed immediately. The madman in Gadara, you have demons. Yes, sir. You need them to leave. Yes, sir. The demons too spoke. Go and leave the man in peace. And ten cities were saved. Don't be near God. Be connected to him. It's dangerous to be around. You will see everything that is happening, but you will never partake of it. God is not asking for proximity. He's asking for intimacy. Just because you are near God and you are aware of what he can do does not mean you will ever experience him. Are we together? Revelations 4. After this, verse 1, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show you things that must be thereafter. We'll stop from verse 4. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like Jasper. Remember? that this was not the first time he was beholding the face of Jesus. In Revelation chapter 1, he saw at a level. Now he's seeing again and he's seeing something different that he did not see before. And there was rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Verse 4. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their head crowns of gold. Praise the Lord. 
He said, come up hither and I will show you. Come up hither. So the reason why I am asking you to rise is because there is something I want to do to your sight. Please pay attention. That the growth of a believer is based on spiritual illumination. That in this kingdom, your growth is based on the access to the truths, the light that you can see much more than hear. Come up hither. He didn't say come. You don't need to come up hither to hear. Like those who are outside now, without the projector stand, they can hear, but they cannot see. Are we together now? You do not need to come up hither to hear. But if you want to see, Habakkuk said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower. Why? So that I will see what he shall say unto me. Not I will hear, I will see light, growth through spiritual illumination. It is a big deal to God that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Please listen. The victory that has been wrought for us in Christ will remain a story until illumination opens us up to the experience. Please understand this. The mysteries of the kingdom were not designed to remain mysteries. So when we say they are mysteries, we're not just saying some hidden things that were locked up. God desires them to be seen. That's why he gave us the spirit. Your growth in the kingdom will take more than desire. Please listen. Your growth in the kingdom will be on the strength of the quality of your spiritual illumination. Ephesians chapter 3, we'll read from verse 8. Apostle Paul is speaking to the church in Ephesus. Please give it to us. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. Look up, please. It's projected. It says, unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given. What is the grace? That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Next verse. We're reading tonight. It says, and to make, read with me, all men. Stop. It's a ministry given to a man to make men see. All men, not some men. Not to make men of God see. You are mandated by the grace of God to make men see. Because it is only as we behold that we are changed. Hearing does not change people. As we behold him as in a mirror, the Bible says the glory of God. We are Transformation is difficult until you can see a reference. Please understand what I'm saying. So that in this kingdom, growth is through spiritual illumination. So come up hither is a call, a divine call by the Spirit of God to the saints to rise to a higher realm that can allow your eyes to see, to see. To allow your eyes to see the deep things, the Bible says, the deep things of God. Because when you see higher, then your life will become that. And listen, listen, success generally in life is, is a measure of what you attract to your life by who you have become. You have to understand this. It is not so much of what you do, but who you have become. The realities that you attract to your life on the strength of the new versions of yourself you continue to become. And that happens through knowledge, through light. Spiritual illumination. This is where the major ministry of the Holy Spirit do you know, listen, listen, listen. It is very easy to be born again. The Bible says so. That if you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Are we together now? Is the word sozo. That you are saved by believing in your heart 
and then confessing, verbalizing it. But then when the Holy Spirit comes, listen, the, if you would permit me to use the word, the most difficult assignment of the Holy Spirit in the saints is the, the rigor of babysitting the believer until he gets to a point where he allows the Holy Spirit to show him the light that it takes to rise in experience. For many of us, we can be born again. We receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, pray in tongues, and we believe that by that initiation, we have become Pentecostals, as we call ourselves. And then we stay there and never grow and never see and continue to believe that just because time is passing and you can say, I've been born again five years. They say, how long did you know the Lord? You say five years. That's not a very correct answer. It may be correct historically, but it's not correct in terms of transformation. You are not five years in the Lord. It's your results that will show how old you are in the Lord. You are five years from the day you got born again historically. But that may not be a measure of your true age. In the realm of the spirit, our age is measured by the light that we command. We excel in light, not in time. The degree of spiritual illumination that you receive in your life is a measure of your growth. So we continue to flatter ourselves that just because historically we can count a time period by earth's timing, from when we consciously gave our life to Christ, we believe that automatically, as time passes, growth is happening. No, the only dimension of growth that is automatic is biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be engaged through knowledge. You grow intellectually by assimilating knowledge, knowledge along the path of a fuel. Is that true? So you can find an adult who is 20 years, respectfully so, but cannot speak English. Is that true? Cannot speak another language. The person is an adult by biological standards, but when you shift to an intellectual standard, that person is a child. So the passage of time, chronos, does not just make for spiritual growth automatically. The same way it does not make for growth in other aspects. Growth is engaged. It does not happen by default. Please understand this. This is where the pride of many, many Christians lie. We convince ourselves. And you know, sometimes, I'll be talking about it shortly, the, the, the danger of the ritual of tradition. Just because you have been known to be around the things of God for a long time, usually when an election or an appointment in church you understand, eldership or a deacon, most likely you will be the suitable candidate just to honor the longevity of time you spend around the things of God. But it may be the wrongest decision that may have been made. Oh, this man has been 20 years in the Lord. He's a veteran in the things of God. And while they are talking, God is saying, what, what are you talking about here? Who is the veteran? A veteran is a master. One who by reason of his life and the testimonies that come has been able to test the truth. That which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled of the word of life. That's what we teach. Because some of us may need to honestly admit that from the day you got born again, this year was the first step. Although it's 10 years. You got born again 10 years ago. But the first correct result producing step started in 2019. So technically, you are about to be one years old. As far as your age with respect to transformation is concerned. Imagine if that one year old man is your man of God. Is the one who was given the mandate to raise you spiritually. Are we together? With gaps in his understanding. What do you think you will become? He will make you distrust what you already know before you met him. 
the confidence he has in his ignorance will accept you. The vacillations in his understanding will threaten your conviction. The Bible says to be steadfast, to be immovable. It doesn't mean to be rigid so that you cannot change. But that when you find truth and it has been vetted as truth, stay there. Stay there and be there. For instance, if you have believed that there are many gods and Jesus is just one of them, that's a conviction. But now when you are exposed to the truth that there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved, now you have the flexibility to change. And when you find out in truth by the spirit and by the testimony of brethren around you, that Jesus is truly the way, the truth, and life. You stay there in life and in death. This is my position about the pathway to salvation. That means if I have the opportunity to debate with an atheist, I'm not about to make some historical jargons. This is my conviction by the Spirit that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot understand this reality scientifically. You can only open up your heart for the spirit of grace to minister this as an encounter. Are we together? To make all men see. To make all men see. To make all men see. I want to deal with something tonight that the Lord put in my heart. Still in an attempt to bring us into an accurate understanding of the ways of God. The danger of what the Bible calls the traditions of men. There is such a thing in scripture called the traditions of men. And the Bible is not careful to reveal to us how far this concept, this way of life can can interrupt the rising of the saints to the pinnacle of their Christian experience. Colossians chapter 2, please, and verse 8. Hmm. All right. Beware lest any man spoil you. The word spoil you there is to make a prey out of you. Like you go to war and you, they say you spoil the people. You conquer the land and take their treasures and add to your treasures. He said, beware, lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not after Christ. Now, this concept has been interpreted from the lens of all manner of, you know, all kinds of theological dimensions. But it is true that there is something called the traditions of men. And that the Bible says that it can make men become praise. One more scripture. Matthew chapter 15. We'll read from verse 2. Matthew chapter 15. Now, some gentlemen just came to harass Jesus and his disciples. Watch the story. We are reading to verse 9. Why do thy disciples transgress, what? The traditions of the elders. Someone is asking Jesus a question now. So, let's listen to what Jesus is about to say. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Three. But he answered and said unto them, why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? What do you do? You transgress the commandment of God by your tradition. Next verse. For God commanded saying, honor your father and your mother, and he that cursed father or mother, let him die the death. Five. But ye say, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, um, it is a gift by whatsoever thou shalt, you know, Thou mightest be profited by me. Six, we're reading to nine. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. That means if you can bribe your way out of honor and be free. Tradition created that concept. You, you get the point now? Thus, ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Please take note of this. Let's just finish up. 
Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, uh -huh, These people draweth near to me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Last verse. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. In rising to superior spiritual dimensions, the Bible tells us that we are going to confront a demon. We are going to confront a, a resistance. Are we together now? And the Bible calls that resistance not Satan. He doesn't even call the resistance um, sin. He calls it what? The traditions of men. What is it exactly? What is the tradition of men? Let me tell you this. The goal of this teaching is not to produce rebels. Let me clear the air straightforward before I begin to teach. The idea, listen carefully please. The idea is not to get up in self-pride and move around and begin to fight people who seem to sustain revelations that are inferior to yours. I think I need to put this disclaimer very clearly. Are we together? The idea, any, listen, any lifting in the spirit that makes you arrogant and makes you a difficult person and extracts the love dimension from you has been corrupted. Because growth in the spirit that comes from God must also come with his nature of humility and love. Are we together? These two things must, they are the litmus tests of the purity of your spiritual growth and your revelation. The humility, the Bible calls it humbleness of heart. And then the richness of the love of God in you. That if I claim to grow spiritually and the more I am learning, the more pride is also growing in me. It could be that I'm being indoctrinated by the vain babblings of men. Revelation that comes from God in its purest form. Number one produces humility. Number two produces love. You now look at those who did not have the privilege of having that truth from the lens of compassion. It's important that I say this because I think this is one of the reasons why and what we call the new move of God, if not managed, will become another dimension of religion too. Everybody in the body of Christ right now has given himself the ministry of correcting every other body. So that's what is going on in the body of Christ now. Everybody who has access to the pulpit is correcting someone, young or old. That's what is trending, correction. Everybody is showing how everybody is wrong. It's terrible. Spiritual knowledge should not culminate in dividing the body. It should not culminate in producing arrogant people. No. Paul, at the height of his revelation, he said, I who am the least of all the brethren, is this grace given? It is a grace to make men see to open their eyes. When I rebuke them, it is a grace. When I correct them, it is a grace. It's more than a desire. You've heard me say correcting the body of Christ is a grace. Just because you observe error does not give you the fortitude and the authorization to correct. Because in correcting, many people have begun another error. It's easy for error to start. It just starts as an opinion strongly received. And very soon you will forget about the reason why you started it and enjoy the new celebrity status you gain for being controversial. There is a grace to correct the body. There is a grace to adjust people and bring them within the dimensions of truth. So I'm putting this disclaimer very strongly so that you don't mix every young preacher and just believe that all together they are carrying out a campaign either to rebel against fathers or to rebel against denominations. No. My position as a person about the body of Christ is very, very clear. I will never dishonor the body to communicate truth. I was sent to the body. Are we together? It matters that we understand this. So that 
if the things I say sound difficult, for instance, then you, you refer to what I just said, that he's speaking not from the standpoint of sarcasm. The goal is to wean us out of imperfection, to bring us into maturity. Come up here, a realm of maturity, where you come out of certain things that can peg your growth, hence your results. It is true that there are many things that need to be adjusted in the body of Christ. It is true that there are many mainstream beliefs that need to be edited and adjusted. Please listen carefully. It is true that there are many things that have been proposed by we preachers, well-meaning, sincere mostly, that still needs correction. Are we together now? But it is also true that an attempt to correct other things is an attack. There are things that are ordinances, no matter how con controversial they sound. Calling the body higher must not be from the lens of our convenience. It must be from the lens of God's truth. That means that I will be a wicked man of God to teach you only what is convenient, either based on my educational perspective. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. Let's assume that because of my philosophical standpoint about the miraculous, I don't believe the miraculous. Did you know that every time I read and we reach the miraculous, I will just jump it and wave it away? And sitting under me, you will find out that you are deficient in that level of understanding. Because I do not believe it. I'm not interested in it. It's not working in my life, for instance. So I trivialize it and I force you to trivialize it. A good man of God must be able to stand and teach truth even if it hurts you. That means your goal is the lifting of the people more than the preservation of your name and your reputation. This is a faithful servant of God. That if, for instance, I have thought that healing is wrong, miracles are wrong, and now I have found the truth, I must sustain the courage to say I have found out that God is still a miracle worker. Someone may look and say, what is miracle alert? Nonsense. There's no such thing as that. You now see. It is true that believers were not designed to live based on miracle alert. But it will be foolish to ignore the fact that there is a provision in God's economy where he can come through for people. So in an attempt to, an attempt to transit you to a level of greater financial stability, I just extract away the spirituality of wealth. And I just let you know, go and get a job and be, and be nice. You will be ready for a shock because this world is full of spirits. Full of what? That's right. And then on the other hand, if all we do is to tell you miracle alert, and that's all you will get, the end of it is that we will leave you a superstitious and a confused people. Are you seeing that? You will never build one bungalow in your entire lifetime with that philosophy. You cannot have sustainable results. Why? Because your mind has been has been pegged around the, the, the ignorance that it is God's, God's, it is based on God to do everything he wants to do. That's not true. Are you understanding what I'm sharing tonight? The word tradition comes from the Greek word paradosis. P-A-R-A-D-O-S-I-S. -S. It can be translated ordinances. It can be translated precepts. That's where we get the word tradition. So it talks of ordinances. It talks of precepts, methodologies that were created by men. Either as a product of culture or as a product of pride or as a product of aberrated encounters 
that were not consistent with the word. Listen very carefully. There are many methodologies today that came as a result of supposed encounters. Look up, please. Look up, please. Look up, please. Let me balance something now. And especially around, respectfully, let me call what we call, um, is it fair to call it the holiness movement? That several people supposedly have gone to hell and have gone to heaven and they have brought forth standards. Many of them as emotional and impacting as they look are not consistent with the conditions provided that by scripture that makes for a believer to make heaven. Are you seeing that now? And if you are not careful, and, and by this I'm not necessarily even talking of things that pertain unto dressing and all of that. Those ones are established truths that were there long before. I know people that claim to have gone to hell and saw almost every man of God that, that has transited in glory. Now, that kind of thing, the, the vision receiver does not know that he or she is under an attack. Just because you went to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are fully. The word of God is still Lord, even over the realm of the spirit. You have to understand this. You can travel to a dimension that you have never been before and see all kinds of things. Remember that in the realm of the spirit, anything you see there is higher than what you have known on earth and you can easily receive it and come back with doctrines that later will become traditions, precepts, ordinances. There are people who have returned with revelations that they saw believers who did not tithe in hell. I don't believe that. There is nowhere in scripture that shows that non-tithing takes a man to hell. There are people, for instance, who have returned and, and have given all kinds of propositions that they saw people who had given their lives to Christ. Just because of issues here and there in their lives, they still found them in hell. I don't believe that. <clears throat> listen. Jesus, listen very carefully. I teach you sound doctrine. When Lazarus, listen carefully, Lazarus and the rich man, the rich man made a request and he asked, he asked Jesus, he said, please, let Lazarus come back to life. Huh? And let Lazarus come and preach to my brethren and tell them that I am there in Hades, the place of the dead. And then he says, no, they have the law and the prophets. That means, he said, even if Lazarus should come back to life, they will not believe. But sufficient is the law and the prophets. Listen to them. I still speak to men who are in the earth realm. And I still have the truth of scripture that can guide men. The average believer now is not sure whether he will make heaven or not. It's like we're waiting to see. Let the trumpet just sound and then I'll, if I'm qualified, I will know. But it's wrong. When a woman is pregnant, she knows. When a student graduates, he knows. When you are hungry, you know. When you are full, you know. When you are crying, you know. Why would salvation be that vague? It means something. Listen to what I'm saying. You know I gave you a disclaimer. It is not about tell them or anything. I'm teaching you truth. I'm bringing you to a point of certainty where you know that you know that you know. Are we together? There are many concepts in the body of Christ as it is now that will destroy the saints if not adjusted, if not upgraded, and sometimes if not totally taken out of the way. Please listen. I will just run through a few of these concepts with you. And then if God grants grace, we can touch a few and pray. Am I boring you? Hmm. Number one. There is a big problem with the biblical understanding, the biblical concept of greatness. 
Greatness is one of the most controversial issues right now in the body of Christ. What is the standard of greatness? What is the difference between mediocrity or where is the line between mediocrity and contentment? Please listen very carefully. Where is the line between striving to be all that God designed for you to be and lost? You have to pay attention. Because in both cases, you will find scripture that encourage both. You will find scriptures that encourage you. Scriptures like the path of the just is as a shining light. Speak to me, believers. That shines ever brighter unto the perfect day. And yet, you will find scriptures like godliness with contentment is great gain. So, while you want to quickly rise to the shining light, here comes another scripture. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Then it continues by saying, we brought nothing to this world. And it is certain that, listen carefully, I'm teaching you something that will make you a sound believer. It is certain that we can take nothing out of this world. But that having food and raiment, let us be content. So why do I need a master's? Why do I need a PhD? Why do I need to be the highest professor in that department? Here the Bible is telling me. Are we together? I read a scripture that says, I search for a man. You know? To stand in the gap and I say, Lord, I'm the person that will rise. The next verse you are reading is, teach us to number our days. That we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Any dimension that you want to look at life from, the Bible seems to support it. That means there has to be a grace to put things in order. Please listen to me very carefully. Because many innocent people, people destroyed houses that they started to lintel level. Somebody came with a vision and another person will carry bulldozer and scatter everything and say this and will be a missionary. By the next week, you will carry a bell and a cassock and stand by the road with no one listening to him, ringing the bell and shouting and saying, repent, I know what I saw. He, it may not be a lie, but something about the inaccuracy of spiritual communication has destroyed that man. Ten years later, he will find out again he was wrong. While he did that, his children did not go to school. While he did that, the land he had has been taken away by a thief and they built a hotel on it. Life may not allow you to make certain mistakes and come back to correct yourself. That's why God is teaching you this now. There are people who made some of these mistakes and had the luxury of returning back. But you can't return others who believe what you said before. What is the balance about greatness? This greatness thing has been fought. Another concept what is God's idea of spiritual maturity? Everybody claims to be mature in the body of Christ. At least biologically, there's no confusion. Our little ones cannot claim they are mature. Their foolishness will be obvious. Just give them five minutes. They will do something that will prove immediately that they are children. And an adult, no matter how foolish an adult is, he will not become a child again. You are an adult, it's too late. You are just an unwise adult. Are we together? But spiritually, listen, how can I know that this person is matured spiritually? There are many parameters we have put in the body of Christ. And many of them are largely not consistent with God's idea. Let me give you another, another concept. What exactly is our call as believers? What is our mandate as believers? This has been a big confusion in the body of Christ. Please pay attention. What is our mandate? Others say our mandate is to take over everywhere. Others say you are not taking over anything. Our mandate is just to be born again and to wait until you leave. When are you going to take over Dubai? Have you seen that? There are many people who argue that our mandate is to make Nigeria become like Dubai, the kingdoms of this world. And others say, look, Nigeria will not be Dubai. Stop dreaming. Win souls and make sure souls are saved and rapturable. 
And both concepts have biblical backings. Please listen. I love to teach these kinds of things. What is our call as believers? Is your call to be a lecturer or to be a preacher or to be a soul winner? Ask the average believer on the street, what is your call? Some will say to win souls, nothing but souls. Another person will say to, to, to build a house for God. What does that mean? Next concept. The subject of faith. The subject of what? Faith. F-A-I-T-H. Faith. The subject of faith. Where is the balance? What is God's idea of faith? It's been a disturbing concept. You notice that there are so many people in the body of Christ who tell you, look, all this faith, faith thing, leave it away. And others say, no, 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 no. The Bible says this is the victory that overcomes. It even says that just shall live by faith. Four times scattered through scripture. In one of the renditions, it says that just shall live by his faith. Next concept. Our interpretation of tragedy and negative situations. Our interpretation of tragedy. I'm just giving you a few of them. There are many. The discussion is come up with a, a higher level of more accurate spiritual illumination. And I'm showing you the things that have pegged our maturity in the body of Christ. Our inability to find stability in these areas. These are the areas that challenge our convictions again and again. Vacillating concepts. What happens when a loved one dies? Another person says, no way. No way. There's no evil in God. And the person cannot die. Another person will say, I was in the hospital when I had the person saying, Lord, into your, your, it, not spirit, into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he had the person. And the prayer seemed to be answered. He died immediately. And then another person says, no, 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 no. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. God cannot be the author of this death. Where is the balance as to the nature of God as far as interpreting tragic situations? In fact, there are many who it is so, it is so, um, it is even so extreme that anything at all that represents even if your car stops on the road based on the propositions that have been given you have questions to answer the first question is where is your faith the second question is where is your God now many believers are confused and then there are others who just allow anything to happen as though believing that God is a miracle worker and believing that God is a way maker is a lie we have extended it now to fight songs we fight songs, remember? Everybody is fighting every song now. I guess we'll start singing scriptures directly. Just sing. At least nobody will fight scripture. Just open to Exodus chapter this and say, look. And he said this and that. We know we have passed from death to life. Just compose it so that nobody argues any concept. There are people who one little mistake, even linguistic mistake, is attacked. And while they are attacking the song, someone else is having an encounter with that same song. Rolling before God and shouting that song. Next concept. One of the very controversial ones again. The concept of fatherhood and mentorship. Fatherhood, mentorship, covering, partaking of a grace, and so on and so forth. It's a very serious concept in the body of Christ. There are both sides of the pendulum when dealing with these issues. There are people, for instance, who have 
made this issue of fatherhood and mentorship such a big deal as though even your salvation is determined by another man. There are people who will not eat food until it is approved. There are people who cannot travel until it is approved. When, when a woman is pregnant, her pastor knows first before her husband. And yet the Bible says what God has joined. Let no man. It didn't say let no spirit. put. That's a way of putting asunder. Because the man can say, well, that means that what you are trying to say in essence is that this child is not my own. And the same Bible says, wives, submit to your own husband. There are members whose salary the pastors know to the digital detail. That even their wives do not know. All of that is under the umbrella of fatherhood and mentorship. There are churches that are almost like cults. You cannot make up your mind that, look, I'm tired. I love you, man of God, but I think I need to leave. I, I sense that God is calling me somewhere. Any other bad thing that happens to you by leaving, the man of God takes credit for it as his grace fighting you. Something is wrong. Listen very carefully. Remember the disclaimer I gave before I started? You now see why I gave it? Cult-like approaches of Christianity. A man of God can step into any house at any time. Peace be unto this house. And just say, what do you have? Oh, man of God, what do you want? Anything for you. Okay, uh, pounded yam and vegetable soup. Let me have goat meat. And, and you know, all, all kinds of things that we do. These are poisonous concepts. What of the ones that they collect? A, a, a member will receive the blessing from God and buy a new car. And the pastor will collect it. What of houses that have been collected by people in the name of, uh, of, uh, of Isaac? Are you seeing that now? I'm addressing concepts with you. What of marriages that have broken as a result of the recommendation of a supposed father or a mentor? That you sit down and veto that I, as a man, I will never mention my name, I, as so, 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 as so, man of God. I hereby don't like this marriage because the wife is not kind or nice to me. And I use my spiritual authority to break this marriage. And the son says, yes, sir, your wish is my command. It's occultism. What about accrediting life partners? That a man can be with his wife and all of a sudden from nowhere, the Geo's wife or the Geo can look and say, this guy is a serious partner in this church. This woman is coming to carry him out of the church. It is scattered. Dangerous and devilish. What of choosing for people where they should walk simply because of the selfishness of their service in your church? God gives someone open door of 450,000 in, a, in, in an oil company and he has another job of, of 35,000 35, near your neighborhood and he said, I know God. I, God wants you here simply because you are the one in charge of sound. And I rather keep you there than to employ another person. What of turning members into masons to build to build Please don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not fighting anybody. The message is called come up hither. We're challenging concepts that fight our being accurate in the spirit. They are traditions of men. If I'm building this koinonia cathedral and your head does not carry one block, that's how difficulty will remain on you. No, sir. No, sir. And you see members running to make sure at least one block is on their head. And I shake off every, every, uh, um, 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 uh, what do we call it? Every difficulty in my life. Now, listen, that also does not mean that by faith you can connect your service to breakthrough. Because people have done it. 
they have connected their service to certain victory. There is a provision in the dealings of God, but it's not by threat and manipulation. It's by revelation. This is what is going on every Sunday in this country, in Africa, and around the world. What of the issue of seed sowing? I believe in giving. I believe in seed sowing. You are greedy, you don't sow seeds, you will go down. I guarantee you. God will not cause you. It's designed in the system, no matter how you argue. So I'm, I'm not here to bring all kinds of debates. Um, what is working for you? You keep it there, and what is not working for you, you can change it if you want to. I don't like draw soup. I can't preach against, against my experience with draw soup is that we are not friends. Are we together now? Yes, but draw soup is your favorite, remember? And, and, and so, I mean, two of us, pro, provided we are surviving. So you believe whatever constructs your success and leave it there. But one thing I know is that in the final analysis, you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. But what about seed sowing? A man of God's birthday is announced one year to the birthday. As soon as one is finished, they start preparing. There are, there are circles where the man of God makes his wish. I want a Lincoln Navigator. Limited edition. How much is it? 85 million. And everybody begins, heads of department bring 10, 10, escorts bring 5, 5, you know, all kinds of things. It's wrong. All in the name of fatherhood. This, all these destructions come in the name of fatherhood. I know a man of God, respectfully so, that one of his sons got tired and literally ran out of this country because the son pays for every flight ticket. Every what? Flight ticket. Including emergency flight tickets. The emotional son made up his mind one day that I will stand by you. I was sent to lift up um, your hands like, like Aaron and her. And the man of God believed that testimony. And from that day, even if you are bringing him for ministration and you are paying, he will tell the son, I'm on my way going. And the son will, it inconvenience them. Sincerely, it's a true story. Almost tore the marriage apart. Because when God blesses them, the, and you know, it's not like you are flying economy or, or, or all of this that you can even book early and book in advance with a low price. Tickets that no matter what time of the year you book is still expensive. Fatherhood. Fathers, in all honesty and respectfully so, have been some of the greatest abusers of church members. All in the name of fatherhood. And remember the idea is don't talk against me. Don't talk to me. You dare do that, a curse will come. And truly it will come. Don't think it's just a joke. It will come. But the idea is threat. You don't threaten people into submission. You impact people. You pour your life to them. You become a representation of Jesus. And then as a result, they follow after you as you follow after Christ. That's God's concept of leadership. Next concept. The concept of wealth and success. This one is a big one in the body of Christ, especially in recent time. It looks like there is a very strong campaign against what we believe and know to be materialism. And I will never be um, one who proposes um, a lost driven materialistic lifestyle I come from a very conservative background it's an advantage to me and my persona as a person I'm, I'm quite conservative but the level of attack that has come on anybody called into the ministry of wealth and prosperity is, is becoming disturbing because it's, it's, it makes it look like the moment you capture in your theology a provision for God to bless you and bless people. You are qualified for a harsh attack. An attack under the covering of materialism. And it's not so. 
Some of the mo most materialistic people around the world don't have any money at all. And yet we have attacked people again and again. Snap a man of God with an expensive anything, anything, even Bible, and they attack the person immediately. Why will you buy this kind of Bible? What part of it is different from the English? You are listening, all these kinds of things. And let me tell you the danger. The danger is that believers who should rise financially, now fear is making a lot of people to just retreat and say, well, I wanted to share the principles that will make people to rise while they serve God. But now that I'm being attacked, I'm not ready for this. Just serve God and go to heaven. No matter how you get there, God will fix up every remains of you that arrived there. But for now, I'm not, I'm not going to be part of it. It's terrible. And then on the other side, on the other hand again, I'm telling you there are people sincerely, let me tell you, I've heard different gospels on wealth and success that is poisonous. What did I call it? Poisonous. Dangerous is the kind of gospel that takes God out of your life. Lost, lost after things. Do you know that, let me tell you this sincerely, You've, you've seen this suicide happening all over now. People dying around. I believe that part of the reason may be the frustration that is coming based on the gospels that we have taught people. Because if I teach you, for instance, that your true worth is based on the jeep you have or the house you have and you are now 38 years old. Are we together now? Yes. No husband, no wife, no car, no child, no jeep, no house. You will hang yourself. We have to be careful because the communications that we are bringing in the body of Christ and sometimes even we men of God create a basis for competition. Oh, this is my son. You are a true son. You mean that car outside you just brought it? Oh, amazing. This grace is working. And other sons are saying, so what are we now? That this thing is not working. I mean, the Bible never said the sons of Elijah stopped being his sons. Although one person received the mantle, it, they, they were still sons. So most believers now are under pressure. Look at the speed with which men of God are informed the moment any believer does anything that is nice. Oh, come to my house. We tie a ribbon from one side of the building to the other and the man of God comes to cut the ribbon. And then the son becomes a deacon. And then the rest now that may be struggling around, they are under pressure. And the wives will usually say, my husband, are you really a man? What are you? You are not, I mean, you, you, every, what kind of a man are you that all doors are closed towards you? Prayer or no prayer doesn't make a difference in your destiny. And the man sits down on his way to taking drugs or killing himself. Look at young people who are depressed now. Once you cannot wear something expensive on your head as a lady, how much is this Revolve? 700 Naira. Ah, you are too beautiful um, um, for this kind of Revolve. It's a dangerous indoctrination. This body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh. So what? The, did God teach that just because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you, you run your life down? This is what has destroyed a lot of people. People have gone to buy cars they don't have the money to maintain. People have gone to buy houses and, and debt is yoking their neck to death. Because of a point that was trying, to, was, was trying to, to get to. There are churches that don't have the capacity for expansion yet. They just got up, were taking over. And now open a branch in Zampara, in Sokoto, in Maiduguri. They killed it. Another concept, the concept of what we call glory realm and supernatural encounters. Listen very carefully. 
I'm a person of encounters, but listen carefully. There are all kinds. Do you know, let me tell you, something happened in Zaria. Those of you who were there, I, when this concept came into this city, those days, by God's grace and with all humility, we're privileged to be some of the people who were at the forefront of the move of the spirit when it had to do with encounters and supernatural manifestation of heavenly things. I remember those times we downloaded videos of Ruth Heflin and Joshua Mills and all of these people to show angels, visitations and all of that. But something strange happened. When that move started happening in Zaria and people started having gold doors, people started having this, that move did not reach two weeks and everything left. And the Lord told me that the reason why that thing left was because he, he did not want what he was doing in Zaria to be corrupted with supernatural experiences. People will sit down and pray for hours looking at their hands, waiting for their hands to shine as a result of gold dust. Everybody will hold everybody's leg, whether short or not, and say, sit down, that leg must grow. Have, did you see that concept? And just imagine in their minds that leg is coming out. The person was fine. When legs grow, don't you see it? This, listen, listen. And most of these things happen with charismatics. So the average man of God is looking for this something spooky. And your hand is wet and you say, wow, supernatural oil. Let me tell you, many of you know my experiences. I've had these supernatural experiences of oil, of all of these things. So I know what I'm saying. What of those who sit down and imagine angels? It can even be an attack. It can be a spirit being. Now, please listen to what I'm telling you. So people keep roaming around searching for visions and searching for experiences. They close their Bible for weeks. And they, are, they just want the room, something wind. This is the wind of this. They quickly record it on a phone. And say that I had an encounter. And the devil says, this is, this is an open door. And one day that person will get a visitation. Because you don't know what a spirit looks like. Angels don't have feathers. Read your Bible. No, feathers are not for angels. We pride in this experience. I am a woman of God because I see visions every day. I am a man of God because I see visions. A believer who is walking based on the word now closes the Bible and says, I'm going on a three-day fasting. Lord, what is in this vision that I can't see? Are we together now? And you are fasting and praying and people begin to pray until they land in the hospital with, with problems of bipolar. Talk to me. Am, am I, am I, it's true. Doctors will tell you. How many times have we gone? I'm not, I'm not insulting the people. Don't get me wrong. But many of them continue to pray until they have encounters. Remember the gentleman that came from one of the cities, the Jesus guy and the Judas? Do you think that guy started like that? He started as a sincere servant of Christ, but with the obsession for encounters. People will get up in the night and they are looking for anything superstitious. The moment light, there are birds that come in front of my window every morning. They keep pecking on the window. I can, I, can now, I can now snap those things. I mean, anybody who studied biological sciences know what these birds are trying to do. Sometimes they sharpen their beak. I can now get up and keep recording these birds for one week and say I have divine messengers. How many, how many birds were messengers in the Bible? Birds brought raven. Yes, I agree. How many birds spoke in the Bible? They only brought food and leaves from Noah to confirm that the flood had finished. Many of you were doing well, believing the truth of scripture, until this era of visions just came and corrupted the purity of your experience. I'm not saying visions are wrong. We need encounters. 
Are we together? So because of this, many people now started studying Scientology. Are we together? And all kinds of new age movement. The, the ability to align your body and your consciousness to the forces of the universe in the seven regions of the earth. And before you know it, it starts working. Because you have touched something that is not of God. Two years down the line, you, you are seeing abilities working in you automatically that you know cannot be regulated. There are many people walking in power today. They are not devilish, but their appetite for power and the supernatural open them up to anything. Whether it is a shrine, whether it is a man of God, whether it is a prophet, just give me something that will shut the mouth of, of, of the people from my region. And you receive something because everyone that seeks There are people who have studied transcendental meditation and yoga all in a bit to mix religion. They just want this out-of-body experience desperately. They want to come back with messages and they've had it. And many of them, you know that there are different pseudo-Christian sects that have all kinds of encounters. They can, they, they can program your body to have all kinds of astral travel. To the point now we are confused in the body. Because we have to balance this. It is alright when an insincere person encounters these graces. But what happens if these graces have been received by your friend? Do you call your friend fake? Do you call your brother or your sister or your husband or your wife fake? One of the latest ones now in the body of Christ is prophetic chanting. Everybody is holding red, your, your, what they call it, phone. You talk and you don't sing, you just chant. Chanting didn't start today. And it is scriptural that there is a dimension of prophetic worship. But if you are not careful, very soon, one day, you will be hearing the tongue. The communicator does not even know when he has delved into something. See, look, let me tell you. Please hear me, believers. The apostolic and the prophetic were designed by God to create the coordinates, the boundaries of the growth of believers as they themselves align to Christ. Be careful. Listen to what I'm telling you. Be careful. Do you know that the concept of chanting started from our forefathers? It was a tra Anybody here that comes from regions where they do traditional festivals, you will know that these are things that... It's, it's a mystery in the spirit that was hijacked by dark powers. And it's part of the things that because God is preparing the church for the move of God. And so some of these ordinances have been restored. But if they are not guided... Any move is usually corrupted when there is no balance. So people begin to delve into some of these things. I'm showing you issues that need to be addressed to stabilize the growth of the church. Very soon we will not have choruses again in church. As soon as we come, we say, praise the Lord, welcome to Fredonia. Mike will start playing some. Everybody will just start shouting like a madman. You find your own part and you are singing. I'm not being sarcastic. Until one day, someone will find out that the more you sing, the more your neighbor is getting mad. And you are wondering. Have you not seen people whose hands were laid on them? And the moment hands were laid on them, they started having demonic encounters. It is not because they are the, 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 those who laid hands are necessarily evil. They themselves have not vetted the source of the power. They are sincere people. Random laying on of hands, more grace. 
It says, lay hands suddenly on no man. Because laying on of hands is a system of transfer. It's also a system of exchange. Are we together? Now there are different other concepts coming. There is no heaven again. So says the vision that other people are coming with. Or many people are saying the heaven other people saw. Now they are seeing other higher heavens. Oh, come on, please. You, you go online and see people who have had encounters and came back with spirits who are saying forget all that thing. Because let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. Satan wants everything God wants. And the moment Satan discerns a move of God, he will come. Certain Christian sects, have you read how they started? Was it not encounters? They had encounters with spirit beings who attempted to correct scripture. And that's how error came. A time will come, I pray it does not happen, where you will be afraid to go to church because you are not sure of what that version of teaching will open you up to. Even these mysteries you see, these mysteries you see, if it's not guided, you will enter into mysticism in the name of mysteries. Every mystery in the scripture is just a mystery to be revealed. It is the revelation of the mysteries that we are concerned about. Because the highest mystery in the New Testament is Christ. And the highest mystery is called the mystery of godliness. That's it. That Christ became a man. The mystery of his incarnation and his virgin birth. Are we together now? Yes. His suffering in the flesh, his ascension, his glorification. That is the highest mystery. Every other one is an auxiliary mystery that connects to it. So that you don't just say, there are many people who say, ah, they send me texts. Papa, thank you for this mystery. Tonight I have a night with you and I want to share a mystery. I say, where, where is this one coming from now? And the terrible thing is if you don't balance this, anybody who fish is demon from anywhere and try to trace it to you. <laughs> Miracle alert has made many people lazy. They have not seen that is proof of God's mercy. And sometimes it comes to encourage the faith of people. There is a level of spiritual knowledge if you have been given, you will never have miracle alert. God will say you are joking. This is too much laziness for the level of revelation you have. Go and get a job. Go and, and give value. To whom much is given, talk to me. Much is required. Notice the people that have miracle alerts most times. There are people that God is encouraging. You are wondering why it didn't happen to you. I'm giving you the answer now. Because God is saying, I am not. Yes. Yes, sir. You can have it. But let listen to me. If I sit down now and I say, Lord, why will, where will you give me miracle alert? God will say, Abba. God speaking, Abba. My son. To whom much is given. Embarrass the investments of God on your life. There are some things that were meant to encourage believers. You have been taught value. You have been taught diligence. Are we together now? You cannot expect God to just continue to do all of No. Are you listening to what I'm teaching you? Come up hither is a call to know where to stand on these matters among many that you must know where to stand that you'll be unshakable you'll be immovable please listen to me that when you say I am a man of faith you know what you are saying I will never in my life with what I know today place value on anything in my life outside of Christ. My true worth is the blood of Jesus. My true worth is not pounds and dollars and cars. Please listen to me. You will never find me depressed. 
not over money, not over house. I will excel. God will bring the houses, he will bring the cars. But never will it be that these things become the basis of my confidence. A newer car or a better car will not suddenly make me know that, ah, God, you are faithful. He's faithful. The apex of his faithfulness has been demonstrated already in what Christ did. Is God speaking to someone now? This must be the basis of your confidence. This is, this is, a, this is a vaccination against depression. Look at my life. Guess how old you think I am? Can you believe that I'm 41? Nothing is happening in my life. And you leave God. I know that God wants to bless you. But if you leave God because nothing is happening, you were not taught well. Leaving God because things are not going well in your life, my brothers and my sisters, is proof of weakness. It's not strength. What shall separate us from the love of God? That you get to a point where you stand. It is not what happens or what does not happen that governs your faith. Apostle, I'm coming for miracle service next week. I'm trusting God for a child. I agree. God will give you a child. But that you can look at God and say, Lord, if in my lifetime I don't have a child, you are still Lord. You are still king. I will serve you with the zeal of a woman with nine children. A lot is going on in the body of Christ that is a reflection of the poor teachings and mentorship. Lord, how can you do this to me? How can you do this to me? I'm going to make an example with someone now that will shock you. Madam, please stand. You, this one looking at me. Yes, please stand. Where are you coming from? This woman, let me tell you a little story. This woman you see follows me almost everywhere I go to minister. She's had a child with a condition. And she's been trusting God for the healing of that child. I apologize if I embarrass you. I hope I didn't. Look at this. I'm just trying to encourage people. Up until the time I went to Eboi, this woman you see followed me with her child. I observed this woman as she prayed and cried and shouted before God. And I knew that it was not just for the child. From Enugu, she's here again to come and receive the word and to grow. Please listen to me. I want you to listen to my message knowing God experientially. Go and get that message and listen to it. There is something about our concept of Christianity that we must balance. If we do not balance this, we will be in big trouble. A man's life does not constitute in the abundance of things. Brothers and sisters, we are people who are prosperous by the grace of God. God has been merciful to us as individuals and as a ministry. We will never look down on the role of the blessings of God. But far be it from me that wealth and all of this will rise above Christ. With or without them, I tell you the truth. Christ remains Lord. This is what you should learn. All this, this backsliding talk. God didn't do this. I, 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 no, it is, it is proof that you are not grounded. If I come here and I find only 10 people in Koinonia, I will go back concerned and I will say, Lord, what is wrong? But to say, okay, Lord, I quit ministry. I will just go and write books and do seminars. No, sir. I'm a ministry for life. This thing we have come, it's not, it's not an ambition to use and make money. It is not because we didn't have options. It's a call by revelation. We have pledged our life and our blood. So when people love God and don't get money and then they are depressed and just sign out of ministry, say me I've retired, oh, what are you doing? I want to start a block industry. Did you have to leave ministry to start the block industry? No. But somebody taught you that you have to choose either of them. Please listen to what I'm telling you. And you will be sound and you will be balanced. A precious, precious man of God that I love very much. Just known him for not too long. Um, it's possible that he's even following now. Um, he lost 
his precious loved one. And I remember us just conversing through the night. And he was just crying and saying, Apostle, I cannot believe this. This precious woman I love with all my heart has gone to be with the Lord. And I told him, listen to me. I'm a man of God. I'm a miracle worker by God's grace. I have seen all kinds of miracles in my life and in this ministry. But one thing I can tell you is that every time we do not understand God, we tell him, Lord, you are greater. I played for him a song from my phone, Don Moen's song, and I encouraged him. I said, just keep quiet and listen to it as I play this for you. And when he finished, I told him, I'm standing by you and all of that. A foolish man of God. No, no, let's forget this. Let's, let's go to that mortuary. I've been to the mortuary before. I've told you this thing. It doesn't mean I'm not a man of faith. Please listen to me. I'm teaching you the ways of God. This is the foolishness that is destroying young ministers. They will call police for you one day if you don't learn the ways of God. There are times that you may not have answers as a man of God. Don't be embarrassed. It reminds people again that you are not God. And it reminds you too. The pride to always have answers to the issues of men will kill you as a preacher if you don't learn. It is okay to not have answers and recommend them to God who created you, the man of God. I told you I used to feel sad when I prayed for people and they were not healed, especially for barren women, it disturbed me for a very long time. Lord, why would you bring this kind of people to this ministry when there's this kind of problem? Let me ask you a question. What is the condition that must happen in your life today for you to leave God? Think about what I said very carefully. Don't assume you have the answer. If I want you to leave God today, what must I do to you? At what point will you leave God and say, I've had enough? When you don't have a husband, when you don't have a wife, when you don't have school fees for your children, or when you don't feel like you are growing spiritually, at what point in your life when your business fails, when your property is repossessed, I give you sound doctrine that will preserve your Christian experience. That in the maze of debates that continue to fly around the body of Christ, you don't join to scar people, but you stand immovable. I know whom I have believed. Megirma. If, if there's any really elderly person, don't bully anybody, but if there's any elderly person, please, they can sit some of this, this space here. Some of the worship team people can stand up. The gentlemen can stand up. Stand up and stay by the wall. Let our mothers sit down. If they are mothers or fathers, if you are, if you are an adult, but you are still young, please stand. It doesn't mean that just because 
we know what elderly is. If you don't look like one of these our mothers, please stand. If you don't look like one of these our fathers, stand. But just to make sure that uh, we help them. If there's a pregnant woman, let her sit. Our pregnant ladies are... No, 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 sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit down. If you are pregnant and there is a reason... Why you cannot stand, just wave your hand. Somebody will help you. Why am I doing these things? So that you will learn. And then you will know that these things were not acting. Are we together? We're not doing it to demean the younger people. But we're doing it to show you the excellency of the practice of the law of honor. Are we good? Can I continue? We'll find somewhere. You know, I'm so excited. It just reminds me of how this thing all started. Those days, those days, there was no suit, no nice cloth. Don't let all these things deceive you. We would wear just anything was fine. We didn't have the, the rigor of looking for any adornment that would cause pain in your wardrobe, you just picked your Bible and off you went. And we prayed without wondering who was fine, who was not fine. We knew no man after the flesh. It was Jesus and fire. That was all that was our concern. Praise the Lord. Imagine that you tried to pray to stop his rain and it didn't stop. Because the Bible says we have power over everything. Is that true? So imagine my precious people who were outside. That you lifted your voice and you said, Rain, I stand as a child of God. As a believer. And I stop you. And the rain stopped. Or the rain did not stop. And then you are suddenly embarrassed and discouraged. And you say, Lord, this thing does not work. No. Listen, I'm not teaching you to be faithless. But I'm teaching you that when things do not work, do not be embarrassed. He is still Lord. He is still Lord whether results happen or results do not happen. Okay? All right, so let's talk about greatness for a few minutes and then we we'll spend time praying. If this rain does not stop this night, you can be sure that we are going to pray until you come up here that this night. <laughs> What, what I've been looking for, I finally found. You'll be free to remove your shoes and pray till you come up hither. The visions you've been wanting to see, you'll see it this night. You will pray until the visions come. Greatness, please look up. In this kingdom, God is not against your being prosperous and your being influential. Let me balance that very quickly. I've heard men of God say all sorts of things. If you're standing and you can't write, don't worry. You can always get the message. I know you are wet and your writing materials may be wet. Don't worry. I've heard preachers say that God's idea is not for you to be the most blessed person. God's idea is not for you to be this and that. In a bit to create balance to materialism. That teaching in itself is error. God is not against your being great. Please listen. God is not a God of mediocrity. Heaven is not a place of mediocrity. Are we together? And everywhere the value system of the kingdom has been re received, there is excellence, there is leadership, there is influence. So it is all right to aspire to be great. Please listen. It is all right to aspire to be wealthy. It is all right to aspire to rise to the pinnacle, the zenith of your pursuit. But the problem here is when your relevance and your self-worth is tied to those things. Are you getting what I'm teaching now? That when you say, I am a failure until Naira and Cobalt in my pocket proves otherwise, there is a big problem there. I am a failure until a husband or a wife comes into my life. 
I am a failure until my womb can give birth to a child. No. No. That's where I have a problem. A man's life, the Bible says, does not consist in the abundance of the things that he has. That means it is possible, quite honestly, to have nothing in this life. And if you have Jesus Christ, it is called the riches. Give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 8. The Bible calls it the riches of Christ. The unsearchable riches. Unto me, who am less than the least of the saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What? The unsearchable riches. That means if you have Christ, you are great. You have Christ, you are wealthy. Honestly speaking, you may not be able to do much in this life. Because the human beings that work in this system will not regard what you call valuable as real value. But I can tell you one thing. That have everything in this life minus Christ, you are not great. True greatness is not measured in silver and gold and pounds and dollars and houses and cars. True wealth is measured in the abundance of your knowledge of Christ. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. You have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. Very powerful song. Sing it one more time. Yeah, you have captured my heart, consumed my heart with your love. And if all I say is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. that's more than enough. Money minus Jesus is poverty. Education minus Jesus is illiteracy. Influence minus Jesus is mediocrity. Jesus is the one who gives value to everything in your life. Redefine your concept of greatness, my brothers and my sisters, to know that anything you have in this life, please listen, minus Jesus, you do not have anything. That means the one thing in your life that gives value to everything must be protected at all costs. Are we together now? Yes. We have garages for our cars. We have stores for our food. But many times we do not have a place for God in our homes and our hearts. We have little safes maybe in our houses where we keep the little money that we have. We have bank accounts. We have ATM cards that we protect so jealously. The moment your ATM falls, by the next day you're on your way to the bank to get another one. But where is his place in your heart? Listen very carefully. And sometimes we men of God have brought a wrong concept. When you stand to see Joshua Selman dressed, ah, this is wonderful. That may be wonderful, but all this is nonsense without Jesus. I repeat, nonsense without Jesus. The true value of a man, my brothers and my sisters, is not the jeep that is parked. When you know this, no man will intimidate you who does not have Jesus. You don't stand and a millionaire comes without Jesus. And just because he's driving a very pricey car and traveling in a private jet, you stand with your Jesus and look stupid. Not after today. I know that I will increase. I know that I will strive to be the best. But with or without prosperity, I am still wealthy and I am still great. 
This is very powerful. It's a revelation that God gave me early in life. I have never felt more useful, more important because of the things around me. I tell you sincerely, the way I felt before I had a car and the way I feel now, in all fairness, is not really different. The only difference is that it afforded me more convenience. But to feel more important with a car key or without a car key, it will never happen to me. Whether a car or no car, I know that I'm valuable. Jesus has made me so. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whether you pass jam or you don't pass jam, passing jam is just a system of getting you to navigate the path of success on earth. Whether you pass jam or not, you are still valuable. Whether you go abroad or not, you are still valuable. Please listen to me. As a graduate, whether you have a job or not, I'm showing you the antidote to depression and suicide and all of these things. Come, Sam. Come, Pastor Alpha. Come, Pastor Femi. Now, look at this gentleman looking all sharp. And then imagine with me, for instance, that you stand among them and you feel, I'm not rich. I am not this. This is what the devil will tell you. Remember that Satan is the master of the sense realm. Everybody say the sense realm. That means you will use what you see, what you hear, to tell you things about your life that God did not say. So he will tell you, you cannot belong here. Why? Because you don't have this suit. You don't have this kind of shoe, this kind of that. And then you back out. This guy is not born again. This guy is not born again. This guy is an idol worshiper. But just because they have physical things, you reduce Jesus to become nothing. And you will give up Jesus a thousand times to become like this man. I will never envy any unbeliever in my life. I will be inspired by their achievements, but not to the detriment of the riches of Christ in my heart. Is God speaking to us? Men of God, learn this. It is not when you begin to wear golden rings and golden chains and you have a convoy of people driving you. That's not when you become successful as a man of God. Please hear me. It is not when you have protocol standing at your back and call. You now say ministry is doing well. That's a devilish indoctrination. Be excellent, but not at the detriment of your spiritual sanity. Something more than gold. I've got something more than gold. Something more than gold. I've got something more. What's the other part? When you understand this song, you will go back to your one room. Now that it's raining, maybe rain is falling on your bed now. And you sit down and suddenly you are wondering, but if I really knew God, wouldn't I be rich? Wealth has nothing to do with the knowledge of God. Wealth has to do with the application of the principles of value and productivity. Don't reduce the wealth of your Christian experience and insult the wealth of Christ in you. You check your CGPA and you see a third class and you just say, I'm finished. Ah, this life is over. No job, no nothing. Ah. I tell it to the world, Jesus is more than gold. 
I tell it to myself. Jesus, Jesus is Lord and Lord. I tell it to the world. Jesus, Jesus you're more than good. I tell it to the world. Jesus is Lord and Lord. Somebody met me years ago. I said, there's a trend of suit, apostle, that at your level you should start wearing. I said, why? He said, because that's what is raining. I said, I don't know who they are, but let me tell you this. I dress well, but I will never be under pressure. Never be under pressure. I will be as decent and excellent as I can be, but I reject any pressure upon my head to mismanage my finances because I'm trying to prove to people that Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive with or without miracles. Did you hear what I said? My prosperity is not the reason Jesus is alive. Anybody waiting for me to be rich, to believe in Jesus, will soon go to hell. Because wealth is not the seed for salvation. The convicting power of the spirit is. Please be careful so that you don't get under pressure. To say, I want people to see my results so that they will be born again. It is true that your results affect them. But if their heart is made up to be hardened, there is nothing they will see in your life that will take them to Jesus. People saw the miracles Jesus performed. Yet when he resurrected, some doubted. It takes the spirit to convict men. It is the goodness of God that brings men to repentance. I'm drumming it today that in coming up hither, your greatest value is Christ. Not a Benz, not a Navigator, not a Rolls Royce. Thank God for these things. But they are simply metals without Christ. Are we together? Thank God for your beauty. If that is the highest perception of value in your life, then it's unfortunate. Christ in us. Talk to me, believers. Christ in us. Christ in me. Not certificate with me. Not a good shoe with me. Not just PhD with me. I don't demean these things. We are blessed people and successful people in this ministry. But I tell you, I count all things but dung. For the excellency of Christ. God forbid. But if my house is to catch fire now. And I stand before God to tell you. If my house is to catch fire. And they tell me apostle. You have one minute. To carry the most valuable things in your house. Before it gets burned to ashes. The first thing I'm going to carry, I won't carry a Bible. You think I'll carry a Bible, I can buy another one. I won't carry a Bible. I will carry my notes. The truths that God gave me. Are we together? I will carry my notes. Number two, I will carry my phone. My phone is important. And my laptop, my, my gadgets. I will carry them. Number two, or number three, I will carry, I think I will carry my card that has my ATM and all these things. <laughs> and it's not because of loss or fear. It's out of responsibility. If I'm not able to carry it, I will not feel bad. Once I carry these books and I can carry my phone, my contacts mean a lot to me. Any other thing in my house can burn to ashes. The cars can burn to ashes from where they came from. How do you respond when things leave you? It tells me to the degree to which Jesus is enthroned in your life. You lost 10,000 naira till today, you are still depressed. You lost it last year. You still believe you will find it. It's carnality. My brothers and my sisters, it is lost. Are we together? Jesus. 
the greatest asset this man has that stands before you is not a flourishing ministry. It's not bank accounts with money. It is not properties and assets. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, the most valuable thing in my life is not outside me. I don't trust anything outside me. They can come and they can go. Is God doing something in your mind today? This grip on things as the proof of success. No. Don't be carried away by material things. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. The real value of a believer is the wealth of Jesus. Please hear me. The real value of the believer is the riches of Christ. I need to drum this again and again. So don't act. Whatever leaves you, check whether Jesus Christ left too. If he's still there, relax. You are still blessed. You are still great. You are still wealthy. Even when death comes to take your life, if Jesus goes with you, you did not lose. That's why Paul said to die is gain, provided he left with you. Vanity upon vanity. All is vanity. Certificate without Jesus Christ is vanity. It may not look like it because of the job it can give you. But keep growing old. You will soon find out that everything minus Jesus is vanity. Marriage minus Jesus is vanity. It doesn't look like it because of the children that come. It doesn't look like it because of the status that it gives you. Ah. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything. One more time. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. That's a true believer. Alpha, Omega. I cannot define my worth by what phone I'm using. Hear me, believers. There are some of you now, your prayer request that you've written for next week is a phone. Oh God, give me a phone of 200,000. What's the most expensive phone? What's the class of phone? Phone. A what? iPhone. So you have an iPhone and you move around with it, expecting respect. Demanding respect. I have an iPhone. No. That's not somebody who knows Christ. My shoe is 250,000. That shoe cannot raise the dead. That shoe cannot give life to any other person. I'm not teaching you to be mediocre. I'm teaching you to be blessed but with understanding. That everything around your life minus Jesus is useless. Our fathers used to say, take the world and give me Jesus. We hate what they said, but the idea was that nothing compares to him. But right now, our lost, driven generation says, give me Jesus and give me other things. This is what we mean. I don't want to lose anyone. Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with prosperity? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ with greatness and appointment? Why will I ever compare Jesus Christ to a flourishing ministry? I am not great because I lead a great ministry. No. I'm not great because of the results that happen in this ministry. Please don't get it wrong. You are not great the day you enter your own house. You are not great the day you buy the car you want. You are not great the day you see nine zeros or six, seven, eight, nine zeros behind the figures in your bank account. The wealth of my relationship with Jesus is something that nothing in this life has the capacity to take. 
I'm teaching you and I'm giving you a new idea. The carnality in this, our world and our generation will destroy us if we don't restore Jesus back to his place and will depress a lot of young people. The next time someone sees you and says, with all this, you're going to church. Look at you. You can't even afford food of 1,000. You tell him, no problem. I am learning the principles. I am coming. But let me tell you for your information, it is not these things that define my value. My value has been defined. The day Jesus said it is finished on that cross, let me tell you sincerely, he stamped my value. God gave Jesus Christ as a receipt to collect me. When you carry 100 naira to buy Zobo, which one do you love more? The Zobo more than the money. So the father carried Jesus and gave him to take you back. And some, some person with, with 500,000 wants to look down on the power of Jesus in your life. I refuse to be defined by what is around me or not around me. I need the things around me that makes for a successful life. Why? Because they add up all together and help my efficiency as far as my living on earth is concerned. And then my promoting the interest of God. But never will it be the basis of my confidence. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Believers, talk to me. But we will trust in the name of our God. He says, vain is the help of man. Never put your confidence in the abundance of the things that surround you. Anything that is truly great, I put it inside me. If it cannot enter inside me, it's not great enough. My bank account cannot enter inside me. Hmm. No. The closest thing to Jesus and the, the Holy Spirit in my life is my intellectual property. At least it entered my brain. It didn't reach my heart, but it entered somewhere. That means I value my intellectual property even more than money. Please have priority for your life. Don't go back home worshipping clothes, worshipping houses, worshipping cars. It's idolatry. Worshipping talent. The riches of Christ. This thing has given me rest. Way before God started giving me cars and vehicles. And not because I didn't have the capacity to get them. God prohibited me from getting all these material things for a long time. And I wondered why. Until the spirit of God revealed it to me. He said, I want you to be a correct model to the young man. That their sense of worth is not in the things around them. Miracle service will be here with crowds outside. I would dress with a suit that can buy a bike that is carrying me. And the bike man will come and drop me. I would drop from the bike with my Bible. And enter with joy. I'll never forget one time that the protocol collected the car of someone to come and preach me. I rebuked them. I said, never collect any member's car to come and preach, to come and carry me. Coming for koinonia with a car does not add or remove the anointing on my head. When I was fasting, the car was not there. So today that God has brought some of this tea and bread, I will be stupid to believe that because of this tea and bread, I am greater. No, sir. My greatness is sub. In fact, if ever I am greater, it is because of lives that are transformed, not things acquired. Do not measure greatness in this kingdom just by things acquired. Things acquired should be the last of the indices to measure greatness. It is the wealth of Christ. Then number two, the opportunity to provide transformation in lives. If Pastor Alpha was a drunkard and through my life and ministry he has become a man of God for instance, this is true impact. This is greatness. Next time someone tells you I am great, tell him show me who you changed. 
if you cannot show me a life, not just somebody you fed, who came to know the Lord through your life? You are poor unless your money brings someone to Jesus. You are ignorant except your education provides a platform for someone to know the Lord. John chapter 1 from verse 5 and 6 and then to 7, remember what the Bible says. There was a man sent from God, he says. His name was John. He says, the same came for a witness to bear witness to the truth that through him, his witness, all men might believe. The real value of anything in your life is how it contributes to glorifying the name of Jesus and then advancing the cause or, or, or making for the betterment of people's lives. There are many millionaires who are not great. There are many educated people who are not great. There are many pastors with crowds who are not great. There are many miracle workers who are not great. It is the measure of Christ in you and the measure of the impact that your life can provide. He is everything. He is everything. everything is you. Everything is you. You are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything One more time. You. you are everything. You are everything. Everything is you. Everything is you. So I can take my gold and lay it before him. My silver lay it before him. My achievements lay it before him and say, Jesus. You are above them all. That when men clap for me because of things, I remind them that none of these things can take my place. Are we together? We are going to pray. Thank God it's raining. You will pray. Oh. You will pray. There's a bus to carry you. But you will pray. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Please give me voice. Much less love and endless work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that will run dry. One more time, listen. What is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and beauty and less work. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the kind. Hey, your presence is heaven to me. Sing it from the depth of your heart and with understanding. Your presence is heaven. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, hope and not to rest. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you.
Hallelujah. First prayer point. Lord, I'm tired of exalting shadows in my life. Let everything be dethroned tonight and Jesus alone lifted to the zenith, the pinnacle of my life. Lift your voice and pray. I'm tired of exalting certificates above Jesus. Tired of exalting my bank account above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting anointing above Jesus. I'm tired of exalting visions above Jesus. Tired of exalting gifts and dreams and prophecies above Jesus. Tired of exalting ministry above Jesus. Marriage above Jesus. Business above Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Don't look around. Pray. Exalted above the things of this world. Let me show you how to truly be great. When you come up hither, Jesus also comes up hither in your life. Higher, higher than anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second prayer point is a very personal prayer point. Lord, what attachment do I have to anything in this world above you? What attachment? There is nothing wrong with having things. But when these things have you, they are about to destroy you. Lord, detach me. Detach me from any other thing that is not you. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Detach me. Detach me from the obsession for money. Detach me from the obsession for fame. Detach me from the obsession for things. Detach me, oh God. Let my true value be Jesus. Please pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Gentlemen, pray. Detach me from the pressure of wanting respect on account of what I have acquired, on account of my certificates. They are not useless, but they are nothing, nothing to be compared. Jesus Christ. Detach me, oh God. Detach me, oh God. Is someone praying? Use tonight, use this opportunity God has given. Detach yourself. And with it will go the high blood pressure. And with it will go the depression. And with 
spirit will go to suicidal thoughts. I detach myself. The pressure to have things so as to gain respect. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Praise the Lord. Now listen everybody. We are praying. There are many of us here. We come from families. Please listen. And we come from territories. Where the prevalent mindset. Is earn your respect. By the things you show. Are we together? Now there is nothing wrong with our families and our region. But I'm just saying that many of us by default are under pressure. They look at you as a lady and say, the day you bring the man you will marry, then you will earn our respect. The day you bring us a child, you will earn our respect. The day, gentleman, you bring us an employment letter from a reputable firm. So there's pressure everywhere. What are you doing? Well, I'm trusting God. I'm teaching in a small place. That's it. You are, you are a shame to this family you hear. You are a reproach to this family. Look at your younger ones, they say. Look at this and that. You are going to pray. Father, the stress. Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I want you to dethrone those things and say my life and my work will never be built on the expectations of men. I cancel it right now. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. I know you've not been able to take in, but refuse to allow yourself walk. Come from being able to be pregnant. Pregnant or not. Jesus, exalted in your life, is the greatest asset you have. Living in a rented apartment or not. Jesus, in your life, Christ glorified in and through you is your greatest testimony. Apostle, I've never healed the sick. I also want to hope miracles. And you are fasting and killing yourself for the wrong reason. My greatest testimony is Jesus glorified. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is Jesus exalted in my life. My greatest testimony is that God dwells in me. The Christ lives in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. We're going to round up shortly, but listen to me. There is no telling the degree of pressure. Some of us are sitting on pressure every day. Your father says at your age, I was already a millionaire. You are now 35. Shame on you. You can't even send money back home. And so all you are seeking for in God is his hand to prosper you. So that you will buy a car and rush back home and say, finally, you want a car, here it is. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Truly, if all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than Prophesy gold. Prophesy one more time. If all I have is Jesus, I've got something more than gold. I'll tell it to the world. Jesus is more than gold. Listen to me. When you see me teach like this, it is because the Spirit of God is ministering to us. Brothers, hear me. By God's grace, we will continue to teach you the principles 
that will empower you and make you great. But don't get into... That's why many young boys today are becoming criminals. Do you know why? Because they have told them you must bring... God gives people speed, I agree. But remember my teaching, when your soul dies for you to prosper, it's not true prosperity. Many young men right now are becoming criminals. And you know why? Because of pressure. And please let me encourage us, those of us who are parents here and listening. Let's be careful as we put pressure on our children. Go and bring a man for me, to, a man that you will marry. Go and bring a woman that you will marry. Give us a child. We are waiting. Bring a car. We are tired. Let's be careful. It takes time for anything valuable to emerge. Allow people to go through the law of process until God places his hand upon their lives. Every one of us started from somewhere. If you saw some of us 15 years ago, there will be nothing in us that is desirable. But God was in the making. And we were given the opportunity to grow. We must give others opportunity to grow. Hallelujah let anybody put pressure on you and say bring this some of you at home right now you don't even have gary and sugar and you're embarrassed because when they tell you confess the i am a child of god i am a this and that you are ashamed there's nothing to be ashamed of my brother and my sister every one of us there were times which you, you hear me share my story here i'm not ashamed of yesterday because yesterday was the ladder that brought me to my today. You are climbing your ladder, climb it with honor. When someone comes to your house and all you have is Gary, don't go and borrow minerals from any shop. Tell the person, as you know, as Apostle has been teaching, I'm on my way climbing the ladder. Sincerely, I don't have much physically. A wise person will say, I understand. We listen to the message together. A foolish person will say, you are ashamed. Leave him to carry his ignorance out of your life. together i want to drum it it is ugly to see men attached to things the secret to getting things is to be attached to god the more you are detached to things they will follow you you will drive them they will refuse to go back there is nothing in my life today i stand by the truth of heaven under god there is nothing in my life today I cannot give. There is nothing that is too special in my life that cannot live. No. When anything enters my life, there is an orientation center before it finally arrives. It's given an orientation. You are a temporary asset. At any point, the master calls. You are out and you are going. The only thing that I will die protecting is Christ in me who is the hope of glory if I fall down here my brothers and sisters and I stop breathing I know what you will do you will pray for me for a few minutes trying to get me back to life and then if it does not work the doctors will come together and you will rush me to Shika and if they put a stethoscope and say ah this guy has died how can our apostle die <laughs> while you are talking I'm watching you Say, no, dear, you better listen to my messages. Go back and get koinonia. I'm on my way. I'm already going happy. You pray for me to come back. I see those chariots. You are joking. I'm on my way. To it. I mean, Apostle, don't talk like this. What if you die? Don't be foolish. Don't you know death also listens? Freedom came in my life when I stopped holding things. Freedom came in my life when everything minus Jesus in my life is a stranger. Everything in my life is a visitor. No visitor sleeps in your house. No matter how late he must look for, bike and go away. The only occupant, not even a tenant, is Jesus. He's giving me peace. I'm telling you sincerely. I live a very peaceful life. The higher he lifts me, 
the more confident I am. If you are confident because an alert entered your account, something will happen when the alert is no more there. This is what God is working in you. I know it looks like time is going, but pay attention. Could this be why you are praying and blessings are never coming? Because the affinity you have for those things is a risk for God to trust you with it. There are preachers who want anointing so bad, they will remove Jesus to create space for the anointing. Jesus, come out, let me have some more space for oil. Billy Graham never performed any known miracle, as we know. I don't believe that is the optimal for a preacher. We should press to every dimension available. But one thing we know is that Billy Graham changed lives. His gospel molded civilization. Captains of industry listened to him. Kings listened to him. That is true wealth. Come up hither. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. Come up hither. And the first thing he saw was the throne room. When he was down, he saw different things. But now when he rose higher, his attention was called to the worship of only one. I'm going to ask the cymbal to clash and the string play. Listen, when that happens, the fire of the spirit will move across anyone here under any oppression of darkness. You must go. This is not a negotiation. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three, begin to clash the cymbal. One, two, three. Kashatabata. Go, 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 I stretch my hand by the power of the spirit. Devils go. Satan be exposed. Satan be exposed. For this purpose was the Son of God. Satan be exposed. Light shine. I release fire. 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 fire upon this congregation. Fire. 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 Fire upon you. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. Fire. 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 You can't stand it. No devil can stand it. Fire. Bring them out. Bring them out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire! Everyone under any cross, any spell, any enchantment, any witchcraft, fire! 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 Fire!
upon Mount Zion, they shall be delivered. Fire, the fire is burning. The fire is burning. You can't stand it. Satan, go, go. It's time for God's people to go. It's time for destinies to be opened. It's time for what has made you to cry to end. Bring them out. Hey, I see you in the spirit. Leave her. Leave her. Go. 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 I see you in the spirit. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Out of her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are free in Jesus' name. Bring me a mic. I do these things to teach you a lesson. Madam, stand up. No, 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 not her. Not her. You are a devil of darkness. For how do you think you can hide in the presence of God's light? Look at me. Bring the mic for me. You are not gone completely, oh. You are a devil of darkness. Out of her now. On your mark, get set, go. Go, 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 go. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Come out of her now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. As you touch me, you touch fire. As you touch me, you touch the fire of the spirit. He make it is out of her now. Out, 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 out. Come out of her now. She's free. In the name of Jesus. It will not stand fire from my hands to your head. If I be a servant of God, you stand around fire in the name of Jesus. Come out of her. This woman's destiny has been tied down. Lord, who is the person? Let the fire of God catch up with the person right now. God shows me this row. There's one person. My hands. Let the fire of the spirit separate that person. Now. 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 Stand up, madam. <laughs> Don't feel embarrassed. Calm down. Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. I want you to look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. See, this woman has suffered. You just see someone walking. Things are not going right. People speak all kinds of grammar and Satan is advancing. Mama, please come. Janfa is going to speak to you. I says, please, Mama.
are free. Take her outside. I see her coughing, whatever. Please take her outside for God's sake so we don't litter this place. Take her outside. I don't know if it's poison or whatever it is that she took. Take her outside. You're still not out. Go out, go out, go out now. Out, go out. Go out in the name of Jesus. Go out of her. Go out of her. Come. Place your hand on this lady's chest. Out of her. Come out of her now. I release fire upon you. Foul devil. Out of her. Patatatatatakapa. Rakata posa tali. Rekete kete kete. Le gronto zopo rotata. Riata la kosiama. All right, your reign in this life is over. On your mark, set, go. 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 You can't stand it. Go. 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 I prophesy to you today. After today, your life will begin to move as if Satan does not exist. Are you listening to me? Every oppression, those outside hear me. Every oppression challenging your family through the greatness of the power that is in the name of Jesus, that challenge will bow. Don't let her go. Bring her back. Come, sweetheart. Look at me. Just look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Just keep looking. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. I'm seeing your father's face on your face. Look at my eyes. Just look. For she will go free. The children shall not suffer the iniquity of their fathers. Right now, you and the spirit of death upon her get lost. Get lost. Get lost. Get lost. Lift up your heads, O oh ye gates. Be ye lifted, O oh ye ancient doors. And the King of glory will come on. In Jesus' name. You're free. Come, Mama. Bring that lady who is falling. See, tonight, many of you, you will go back rejoicing. Lay your hands on her stomach. Out. 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 In the name of Jesus. What 
disease. Cancer. Who said so? The doctors. Lay your hand on so. Lay. Is that interpreter? Selena. Fresh water. Tell her Jesus. Okay. Okay. Tell her Jesus Christ is going to heal her right now. See, she's crying. Mm. Tell her Jesus will heal her now. Is she looking at you? Look at her. Tell her, Mama, Jesus will heal you. Thank you, Jesus. I suffered so much. Look at, look, at, look, at, look at this. 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 This is somebody's mother. This is somebody's mother. of you outside, I want you to know that Jesus is in this place. There is someone I need in this room. The devil has oppressed you. Yes. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, come out. Two of you, all of you in this room, lift your hands. That devil is a liar. As I, I shout the name of Jesus, the fire of God will come. People, please let me in the mighty name of Jesus, I release fire right now. My father locates those two people right now in the name of Jesus. Let the fire of God fall, fall, fall. Two of them, two of them. There's one already, two of them. Fall. Shatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatatat
Time up. Time up. This lady is heavily oppressed. Out of her. Out oh, devil of darkness. You came for koinonia. You're welcome. Out of her in the name of Jesus. Stand up. Pick him up. Fire on you right now. It's time. It's time. It's time. You must go. Go. Bring him. You must go. This lady has been so tight. Now, listen. I need to explain something to you. Please follow me. It's not the people. Listen. It doesn't mean they are possessed with demons. Are you listening to me? So get that clear so that you don't carry your big mouth and start talking stories around. There are three levels of manifestation of Satan. Some of them are actively possessed with demons. Some of them, devils influence their lives and destinies. So the fact that they are manifesting like they are possessed does not mean they are possessed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why they don't even know. Pick him up. Kai, this guy has been so oppressed of the devil. This lady has dreams and she meets with people. Go out of her. Go out of her. Just let him, let him lie down. When he's ready to stand up. This guy is so weak. He doesn't even know that he has been under all kinds of bondages of Satan. Jesus has authority over cancer. You do because it's going to go. Oh, yes, it will go. Yeah? Pray your hands. The blood stroke is looking like a demon. Out of her! Out of her! Out of her! Devil of darkness. It's not cancer. It's a spirit. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. Go out of her now. He was the sun. As it turned on. talking about some. Bring the man on the wheelchair on, on crutches. Let him come and stand here. Please, if we have not called your case, don't just come out. We'll give room for that. But let him stand. Sir, please, can you come and minister to this woman for time's sake? Bring him here. Sir, you're welcome. Look at me. What's wrong with you? Accident. On which leg? This leg. What's wrong with the leg? Operation. They did surgery and it's not working. You want to walk? You believe Jesus will set you free? Clear the way for him. He was the son. the name of the Lord Jesus. Look at me. You believe in Jesus Christ? Can you walk without with it? Are you feeling pain? Where? What of this leg? Look at me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I set you free. I command your leg to straighten out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at me. Walk. Come, follow me. Follow me. Can you walk? Try it. Just take a step and see. What's wrong with the legs? It's heavy. Ah, where? But can you bend it like this? Try and bend it. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Could you do this before? 
Did you do this before? God is healing you. Keep moving it. Move it. Move it. You just do what I'm telling you. Move it. Move it. Now move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Move it like this. Can we try and walk now? Hold this one. Hold my hands. Walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Let's walk. Try and match it down. Is it because of the metal? There's a metal inside his leg. So it's limiting him from walking. Hallelujah. So they must remove the metal. They can't, oh, they put it there permanently. Lord, let this metal be gone with bones. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Command this metal. Amen. Melt away. Ministers move across the crowd. We don't have time. Go ahead. Okay, John Fry is already ministering. Some people outside just move and minister to people. Join them, Kenny. Someone should take on this role. Vivian. I'm hearing the name Vivian. Pastor Sir, yes. Vivian. Who is Vivian? A fair lady called Vivian. No, no, a fair lady called Vivian. The Lord is showing me a fair lady called Vivian. Vivian. Sister, stand up. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes. Thou foul devil. Go. 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 In Jesus' name. Be set free. Leave my love. Vivian. Hello? What's wrong with you? Eh? People come to you and oppress you in a dream. Is that correct? Do you know me? Have, you, have I talked with you before? You want to be free? You'll be free right now. John, it's time for you to enter God's plan and purpose for your life. Are you listening to me? Because you are not supposed to be a photographer. Are you listening to me? You are supposed to have gone far beyond this level. God didn't just bring you to Koinonia to snap. Please take the, the camera. Victor can snap, so be doing it in the inside room. You believe what I'm telling you? Uh -huh, because I see that how many people drink in your family? Tell the truth. And shame the devil. How many? Two, 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 two. You and who? Again, you used to drink. Have you stopped? Completely. Praise God. But the Lord will set you free. Hmm? Because in your family, women are drinking. You believe that? Eh? See, let me tell you the truth. This is not your destiny in Christ. This happened as a result of frustration. Is that correct? Many things. School didn't work. Many things happened. Even why you don't even have your complete result. Is that true? Help me. Is that true? Right. God will set you free. Hallelujah. You believe that? I want to speak into your destiny and call it forth into where God wants you to be. That devil is a liar. <laughs> Come out of him now. Come out of him. I release your glorious destiny. The days of oppression are over. Rise up beyond the photographer. Become the leader and the entrepreneur that God has destined for you to be. See, listen. It's not that this guy.
guy is lazy. Oh. I hope you know that. It's not that he's lazy. Ella, come. Abigail, come. For me, come. Three of you, come and stand here. For the sake of your families, the time has come. Out of her. Come out of her now. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. A devil of darkness. Out. Now. Now. Shatata rata. Reketele mo subariata. Brento capriata laka. Rakata baba baba baba. Out. Out. Fire upon you. Setele ke pariata. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Fire. 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 Be set free. Right now in the name of Jesus, you have a glorious destiny. No devil will hold you down. In the name of Jesus, lawful captives be free. I release you. That devil of temper and anger, go, go. I command you be free. The plague of death over your family, go, 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 go. I, come in, I command that terminal disease. Now it's time. Time up. Time up. You are a devil. Go in the name of Jesus. Be free. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That devil cannot stand. Fire upon you. It's time to be free. Time to be free. Time to be free. Leave her. Let her go. This lady has suffered too long. You've held her destiny down. Go in the name of Jesus. again. Come. I stopped praying for you for a reason. Please take this guy up. This gentleman. Look at me. See. Come here. Do you know that your life, listen, listen. I saw upon this guy the spirit of Cain. Didn't know what it was. He was lying down here. That was why I walked there and laid my hands upon. You know the curse that was upon Cain. Bring them out. God is not done with them yet. You know the curse that was upon Cain. He said he won't die, but he will be a wanderer. This is how this guy's life has been. Today you are in Lagos. Tomorrow you are here. Next tomorrow you are this. It's time for your freedom. Free you. As the sun, as the time, my dear, come and stand here. Yes, come and stand here. Birthday girl, you are the one who celebrated your birthday yesterday. We are going to pray and minister to people. The ministers are, sir, you, you are done? Ah, please pray, oh, please take time and speak into their lives, I beg you. These people came to receive. Ministers, go around, please prophesy to them. Where's Jamfa, Jakes? Please, please move around. Where are the people I called out? My dear, you know, the devil wants to make your life a waste. So you are moving, but you are not accomplishing it. But the Lord loves you. And tonight, the eye of the Lord is upon you. Hallelujah. You believe that? Hold my hands. Both of your hands. Look at me. Just look at me. Lord, let this lady be free.
making you pregnant. Drive every useless man out of your life. Are you listening to me? I'm not saying you are pregnant now. I'm saying I see you. In the realm of the spirit, let me tell you. Hallelujah. Praise God. So don't please keep any man who wants to come and talk drama around you. Because I'm seeing that you are going to three countries. Number one is South Africa. Huh? Number two, UK. three countries. The Lord is taking you there. Hold on. But then I see a lot of resistance rising up from the realm. I may not be able to talk all this with you because we are in the presence of people. But I want to pray for you. It's time. See, three things will happen. One, a passion for God you cannot recover from. The ministers are ministering to people around. While they are that devil, let me tell you, cast out every devil, prophesy, release people to their prophetic destinies. Let her go. Go! Go! Time up, thou devil of darkness. Be free now. Be free now. I command that wicked spirit. Depart from your life. Fire right now all over your body. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost. All over you. Right now. Leave her, let her go. For she shall not be called Jabez. That's what the Lord says as she said. Because you were born in sorrow, you will not be called Jabez. Tonight, I enlarge your coast in the spirit. My dear, look at me. Today, you will walk into your prophetic destiny. See, you don't know what it is that has happened to you now. Even you, you cannot decipher. Look at me. You are a very good girl. Are you listening to me? But you are assuming the character of another person. Tonight, the Lord sets you free. This lady is a wonderful lady beyond your imagination. But sometimes, you see her doing things that even her does not know. Because I see the spirit of anger and rage. I mean rage only to kill somebody. But the Lord sets you free. And this is what I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing you move from the side. And you are climbing a ladder. And the Lord says restore. This is what I prophesy. Restore. This is what will begin to happen to you. Restore. Hearing the name Ephine. Ephine. Who is Ephine? Ephine. Now, if you brought someone for healing from outside Zaria, quickly bring them forth. Quickly. We have to round up. Quickly, please bring them. If you invited someone, no matter how far you are outside, bring the person, sir, come. It's time for the Lord to set you free. Not only in your health, but on every area of your life. You believe that? Hold my hands. Both of your hands. All right now, I speak to you. I open up that door. I challenge the works of darkness. Go! By the fire of the Holy Ghost. One, two, three. The Lord perfects you. Who brought this man? Both of you. Bring them here. He has what? His side. He used to be bigger than this. But what happened? Because I'm seeing something like a rock upon his head. Who is Silvano? Sir. Does he drink? Who is 
be your friend that brings. He's drinking. You need to get him born again and see what he's doing. All right? I want to pray for you right now. Your weight will come back. Your life will be restored. And your eyes will begin to see clearly. Hallelujah. Who's Tiffany? Silvani. From where? From where? Jogo. You are born again. You love Jesus Christ. But you won't do ministry the way you are planning. You will start afresh with God. Alright? So you disable all those man of God things. You start afresh with an advancing Christian life. God will bless you. Alright? I'm going to pray for you. You believe what I'm saying? And leave all your friends who are deceiving you. Huh? You are going to be a great man, but you are not yet that man till you restrain the spirit of the spirit. Those teachings that people jump and thrive over, they are basic things in the spirit. Let God work with you. From today, you begin a new journey. Hold my hands. Lord, put a fire upon me. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, new beginning, fresh start. Just breathe in and out. As deep as you can. In and out. Baba, be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, who brought him? He came on his own. What's wrong with you? My grain, put your hands on your head. Lay it on your head. Be free. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Come, this prayer may be used. Please pour the prayer request. You will be a mighty tool in the hands of God. Huh? Mighty tool. But he will first set you free. Then he will begin a work with you. Any appetite and anything that does not belong to him will give way. You will be surprised what he'll begin to do in your life. Okay? Look at me. What am I doing? One leg in. Where is the other leg? Why? Because this is how your life is. It's time for you to love him with every passion. Mm -hmm. So I break everything that is not of God in the realm of the spirit. over your life. Take over her life. Now foul spirit, let her go. Lord, anoint her and use her too. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Please do it quickly. Someone help her. Up your hands. I look to you. I saw the sun rising over your family. And then I heard this song. I will wait for you. Jesus. You're the sun in my The days of oppression are over. You are standing on behalf of your family. Something is happening to your father right where I'm holding. 
the Lord is setting him free. Today, the Lord is giving you the mantle that was upon your mother in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because as I look at you, I see her face. And the Lord says, I should tell you to run with the spirit of power. Whatever you decree will happen. The Lord will establish you and you will be a mother indeed. That all your times of tears will be taken away by a new joy. Take this message to your father. For the Lord visits your family tonight. are still okay those that are around pastor williams is here just if the ministers are ministering let them continue but those that are around even if it's just me and pastor williams please let's pray on the request after we pray on the request i'm going to begin to move prophetically and speak this is the time you will receive are you listening to me stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to pray in tongues Bishop. Stretch your hands. Shaba la bara do krasta bara bara. Rata kata brata kere bala de bash. Paroka prande prande shida. Do miracles, oh God. Mare kata bala da 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 bash. Solve every problem here, oh God. And for all our Facebook, Twitter. Egyptians, you see them no more. These 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 Egyptians. You are conquered. Whatever is conquered here is conquered. All over this country and around the world, we release testimonies, miracles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your hand, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, by your great power, let there be miracles on this request. Miracles, supernatural miracles, terminate sicknesses, terminate diseases, never to return. Great miracles in the name of Jesus. All supernatural jobs, supernatural wisdom, let it be done by your spirit. Miracles by your spirit, supernatural miracles by your spirit. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I sing. I found a reason why I sing. I found a Lift your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I want you to receive every prophetic word because the creative power of God is going to swing into motion. The creative and prophetic power. Lift your hands. As I pray, I'd like you to shout a loud amen with your spirit. Hallelujah. 
right now. Doors of delay. I command you, be open in the name of us. Delay, be gone. Delay, be gone. Delay, delay in marriage. Delay in jobs. I cause it to its root. I release you in the name of Jesus. Every academic bondage, every academic bondage, Kateka Leko Sopa, Repete Latu Zabadi Adaka. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Mental blockage. Be free from it. Academic bondage. I set you free. This is the best exam you would have ever written in your institutions of learning. I prophesy it by the power of the highest. I call this session for you a season of seven-fold restoration. Seven-fold restoration. Seven-fold. Seven-fold. Not one-fold. Not two-fold. I speak it. Where you have been victimized, any student here, who has been victimized right now, whether it is project or service year or whatever, I change it in the realm of the spirit. Any one of your loved ones that has no job between today and the middle of April, I command fearful supernatural joy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every womb called Barry. I don't care whether the womb has been removed or not. Right now. In nine months time. You will celebrate miracle children. Be open. Every barren womb, be open. Hallelujah. Every plague of death over your life or your family members, make sure you are lifting your hands up. Every plague of death by the blood that speaketh better things because I see miscarriages that the devil wants to bring to many families. I see miscarriage of children. Every plague of death, I command it to pass over you forever. In the name of Jesus. He said, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness, dear for God, even thy God, has anointed you with a type of oil called the oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows. The anointing that brings you above. I call you in the realm of the spirit. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Rise up. A new level of prosperity. A new level of lifting. A new level of wisdom. And Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. As surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, let a cloak of favor hit you where you are. 
Favor. 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 Every terminal disease in this place, HIV, cancer, in the name of Jesus, we terminate it once and for all. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. SS, AS, we change your genotype in the realm of the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Every demonic oppression that is responsible for where you are and where your family is tonight. It is time for the new anointing. Cut up your loins and be ready. Every yoke of bondage surely must be broken. I command every captivity over your family by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Captivity ends in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm standing in the spirit before a gate. And the Lord is telling me, let God's people walk to it and move forward in their life. I command you by the spirit and according to the vision of the Lord to me, move forward. Go forward. No more stagnation in ministry. Enter your place of anointing. Enter your place of rest. Enter it. I place you inside it. I take you into the mantle of your life. The prophetic oil of your life. I release it. Move forward. Go forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I speak to you. Every Egyptian you see today. You are the one who knows the Egyptian. So lift your hands with faith in your spirit. Everything called an Egyptian, as surely as the Lord God of Israel lives, once and for all, bye-bye to them forever. Bye-bye to them forever. In your family, bye-bye to them. Bye-bye to them. I release signs, wonders, I release miracles. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. From the depth of my heart, according to the order of grace, we take your miracle. Take your miracle. Take your miracle. Everything your hand touches from today, In the name that is above all names, I command it to multiply. My brother, stand here. Bring this lady, come. This is what I'm demonstrating to you, what I saw in the spirit. That God is connecting you to the people who will take you to the next level of your life. May the Lord take you where your gift will be needed. May the Lord take you where your gift. I command demand upon your oil. Demand. Prophetic demand. I command every uncompleted family project 
every uncompleted family project. The Lord shows me the number 21 in the realm of the spirit. And I pray that between now and the next 21 days, I command angels of help. I release it to your families. Receive it. Receive it. Help. Help is coming. Zion's help. The helper of Zion. Move across families. Move across families. I tell you as surely as the Lord lives, between today and the next 21 days, you will see fearful testimonies by the hand of God. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I impart spiritual gift upon you. At the count of seven, let fresh fire fall upon everybody. Every one, two, three. My God, do it. I see angels. Four, five, six. There it is. Come on. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Outside. Take it. Take it. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Take it. Take it. Take it. Fire. The prophetic. The apostolic. The evangelistic. Teaching mantles. Pastoral graces, leadership, entrepreneurship. I fire it into your spirit. have been deserted so that no man goes to you. I call you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. In the name of the Lord Jesus, doors be open. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. Many of you don't know what breakthrough is. You just receive it. Breakthrough. I release it. Breakthrough. I release it. Breakthrough. I release it, breakthrough. An angel stands in this row. Take it, breakthrough. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Right to the back. Take it, take it. the Lord gives you a new name. Whatever you came here for, whatever request you brought, I command go back with a testimony. Go back with a complete testimony. Whatever you came here with, go back with a testimony. In the name of Jesus. And every one of you who came from far and near to catch a fire and catch an anointing, go back with that fire. Go back and reproduce these things. And even greater. Receive it. Receive it. Thank you, Jesus. Rabata Shalabakuria. Now, listen. The Bible says, For God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish. Listen to me, everybody. Inside and outside. You are here and you've been struggling with your life. The Lord has been speaking to you. You know that now is the time to make it right with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, whosoever will come to me, I will in no wise cast away. He said, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. You've never made this decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Especially many of you outside. Tonight is your night. Jesus is calling you. Jesus is saying, how long will you run away when I have a better life for you? When I can save you from eternal condemnation and lead you to the path of grace. Or you've given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. Please, as you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. Hallelujah. At the count of three, inside and outside, I want you to leave your seat and rush out here. The Lord is calling you. You've not given your heart to the Lord. Leave your seat. They are coming. Appreciate them. Right now, leave your seat. Come right to the front. Clap for them. They are coming. Thank you, Jesus. You need to make it right with the Lord. Come out. Or you've been born again once, but you've derailed. Don't stay outside. No matter how far you are, find your way to the front. Forget about your friend. Please run quick. Quick, quick. Do it fast. Keep clapping, Koinonia. Thank you, Lord, for a harvest. Don't sit back. There are still more people outside. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Don't wrestle with him. Sister, brother, the time has come. There are still more people I see outside. Keep coming. We'll wait for you for one minute. Keep coming. No matter what you've done, there is a fresh start. Celebrate them. The devil is a liar. He will not hold you back. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Keep coming. Keep coming. You are welcome. Keep coming. Hallelujah. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for making this decision. Hallelujah. I'd like to pray for you. I'd like to lead you to Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how far and how long you have gone. The Lord can give you a new start to your life. Are you with me here? The Lord can give you a new start to your life. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. No matter how far you have gone. Lift your right hand to heaven. And say after me, Lord Jesus. Mean it from your heart. This is not a Bible recitation. Lord Jesus. I come before you. Acknowledging you as my savior. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. Today. I receive the gift of salvation. Come into my heart. Give me a new start. In the name of Jesus, I denounce sin. I denounce Satan. Make me a new person. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. From today, forward ever, backward never. The things I used to do, I'll do them no more. Because Jesus is Lord of my life. Father, I commend these ones to you. They have come out to make a genuine decision because they love you and they acknowledge you. My God, I pray that their salvation be genuine. And I pray that from today, you will begin a walk in their lives. I command that you are free from every challenge you used to go through. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let peace return to your heart. Holy Spirit, I commend you to these ones. This is the assignment you have given on their life. I pray you do great things in their life. In the name of Jesus. My brother, you are the one who drove me one time. The Lord will begin to do great things in your life and even in your family. 
for this great decision you have made. In the name of Jesus. Appreciate them and God is great. Now, in one minute, I'd like you to follow the elder. I said the elder. Follow the ushers. Hallelujah. And they'll be able to have your details and we'll follow you up. When, sir? Just Monday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, what time? Tomorrow, 7 p.m. on the dot. Please be at chapel. Pastor J will be following you up. We'll have foundational teachings that we'll bring to guide you and we'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. The small ones, please, the very young ones, you're welcome. You can come by 4 p.m., all right, so that you are not roaming around 4 p.m. If you have to explain to your parents, please tell them you got born again. And if you need, if your parents want to talk to any of the ministers of Oshan, no problem. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, follow the ushers. God bless you. Appreciate them. You're worshiping with us for the first time. This is your first time of attending this glorious meeting called Koinonia. I'd like you to leave your seat and jump out quickly. Quickly. Appreciate them. Come on, Koinonia. There are many people outside. We celebrate you. Come on. Koinonia celebrates you. Give them a big welcome. If there's anybody sitting close to you who is coming for the first time, ask the person to come out. We have a blessing for you. Keep clapping. Wow. Keep clapping. They are coming. Please hurry up. Hurry up. Make way for them. Ushers, direct them. Thank you. Keep coming. Thank you, mommy. Keep coming. Keep coming. There's still space for you. There's still space. We acknowledge you and we want to tell you thank you for coming. Hallelujah. This is Koinonia. Put together by Eternity Network International. We thank God for what he's doing in our midst. How many of you were blessed tonight? I assure you, you will never be the same. You will go back and meet fearful testimonies. I assure you, you will know you met God tonight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for coming. We love you. We truly celebrate you for making our time and the sacrifice to come here. Hallelujah. We are here every Friday building on the word and helping us to understand the Holy Spirit and walk in partnership with him. We want to pray for you and prophesy upon you. Saints of God, stretch your hands upon them. Listen, we are anointed. So if we pray for you, believe it. It will happen in your life. Father, we pray that you bless them. Anoint everyone. May the Lord give you a testimony that will confirm that you met God tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Lord give you a testimony. Come out of her now. Out now. Out of her. Come out of her. Your testimony starts. Come out. Out of her now. Out. Devil, come on. Out. Out of her. Come out of her. Out, out, You have oppressed her for too long. She came for koinonia. Thou devil of darkness. All right, your time is up. Go now. Fire upon you. Fire upon you. That demon of lust, leave her. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. Now I appreciate them coming. You are free. In Jesus' name. Keep coming. Sister. Receive a visitation from the Lord. For you would have come back with the same problems you carried and brought here. But the Lord has visited you today. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. In 
and for every one of you, don't you think you are playing when you are praying for you? We truly pray that you will go back with a testimony and an experience. That the things you used to do that are not consistent with the Lord, you will do them no more. Every bad relationship you came home with, you broke it. You will go back, you won't find the other people again. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord connect you to destiny helpers. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And every bondage of Satan, we set you free from it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much. i like you to quickly follow the ushers. They will have your details. And we pray for you and follow you up. We are here every Friday. The Lord bless you. Keep coming and invite others in Jesus' name. Celebrate them and appreciate them as they go back. Let's take the following announcements very quickly and we're out of here. First Bureau Congress Nigeria presents the Real Entrepreneurs Forum. Hallelujah. How to start and grow your business, how to raise capital, why most entrepreneurs fail, and so on and so forth. This is a business meeting. The facilitators are Mr. Femi Bolaji, the CEO of Intact Pharmaceuticals, Mr. Francis Yusuf, CEO Real Eagle Springs, and Mr. Victor Mataya, CEO Aspire Network. The date is tomorrow, 23rd of February. Saturday time is 9 p.m. The venue is VET Multipurpose Hall. Watch out for the posters, and please be there tomorrow, 9 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. This was put together by one of us. Please honor him and get blessed. Hallelujah. We are proud of this. Hallelujah. I think this is Isaac, right? That's Isaac. Hallelujah. We are proud to dedicate our new envelopes for mission and our school of ministry. Are you happy about that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We've made envelopes for our school of ministry and we've made envelopes for missions. So from today, anytime you are coming for koinonia, hallelujah, as the Lord blesses you and as the Lord grants you grace, come prepared not only to give your offering, but we'll drop the envelopes. You may not need to make any special call. You have your seed, whatever, from this night to sow into the school of ministry. These are arms of ENI. Hallelujah. The school of ministry is directed by Bishop Stan and the missions is directed by Jakes. Hallelujah. That's the way it is. So I like you to be part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. So every time you come from next week, inside and outside, you just drop the envelope. You have your tithe, offering, and then appropriately just put in your seed here. And we pray on it and speak into your life. I want to assure you that this house is fruitful ground. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, we are fruitful with every money that comes and we use it for the reading why it was given. We dedicate this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for what you are doing in this house. We pray that everyone who will give for our school of ministry to raise and to train our students and to train generals in the spirit, my God, I pray that you will cause them to flourish and enjoy your blessings in the name of Jesus. And we pray for our missions, oh God. As we visit hospitals, prisons, police centers, mission fields, and we supply welfare to many people, my God, I pray that whoever partners with this project will experience an open heaven. We dedicate this. It will only be used for the glory of the King. No man will be glorified but Jesus alone. We dedicate it in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. From after the service, if you feel God is leading you the, en the envelopes, don't go with them, please. You will just come and we place them there and then you just drop your seed. House on the Rock Foundation, Zaria presents Tehila Africa. A crazy African place. The date is 28 February. Time is 10.30 p.m. Venue is Charity and Faith Missions. Ministering will be Steve Strings and many more. Dress code strictly traditional. Hallelujah. This is announcement from our School of Ministry. The closing date for the submission of the form for ENI School of Ministry is next week Friday. 
please listen carefully. Next week, Friday, we'll be closing for all the prospective students. And now, the director has instructed that um, the fact that you have the form does not mean you are, you are automatically a student. Hallelujah. And he said, you hold on with the school fees. We are going to go through um, a screening process and then we'll place the list. Am I right here, Bishop? Am I correct? Okay. By the grace of God, the Lord has granted us grace to secure a venue. We'll be using God's time for our school of ministry. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He granted it unto us free of charge. Absolutely free. Hallelujah. We thank God for it. Learn to celebrate what God is doing in the house. So please, the first of March, are there still forms? Okay, well, there are still forms. I understand that there are some of you, especially those who are from Kano and Mina. You can meet Bishop afterwards and you get it. And I know there was a pastor that told me he will be around. Please wait and come out. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.